డాక్టర్ విజయ్ గారు పర్దేశింగ్ లొకేషన్ ఐ నో రిక్వెస్ట్ ప్రెసిడెంట్ శ్రీ సురేష్ సింగల్ గారు సీనియర్ వైస్ ప్రెసిడెంట్ రవికుమార్ గారు అండ్ చైర్మన్ ఆఫ్ జిఎస్టి అండ్ కస్టమ్ శ్రీ మహమ్మద్ ఇసద్ గారు టు ప్రజెంట్ ఎ ప్లాన్ టు అవర్ చీఫ్ గెస్ట్ శ్రీ టీకే శ్రీదేవి గారు థ్యాంక్ యూ ఐ నవ్ రిక్వెస్ట్ ప్రెసిడెంట్ ఆఫ్ ఎఫ్టీసీసీ శ్రీ సురేష్ సింగల్ గారు టు గివ్ వెల్కమ్ అండి it gives me immense pleasure to extend my warm welcome to our chief guest madam dr t k sri devi ji is commissioner of commercial taxes department government of telangana my colleagues r ravi kumar ji senior vice president of tcci mila jaydev ji immediate past president of tcci ఏ మొహమ్మద్ ఇర్షాద్ అహ్మద్ చైర్ జిఎస్టి అండ్ కస్టమ్ కమిటీ ఎఫ్ టిసిసిఐ డిస్ట్రిబ్యూట్ డెలిగేట్ వీ ఆల్ నో దట్ జిఎస్టి గుడ్స్ అండ్ సర్వీసెస్ ట్యాక్స్ వాస్ ఇంట్రొడ్యూస్ ఇన్ జూలై ఫస్ట్ టూ థౌజండ్ సెవెంటీన్ విత్ ఎ కాన్సెప్ట్ ఆఫ్ వన్ ట్యాక్స్ వన్ నేషన్ బై బ్రింగింగ్ ఆల్ ఇన్డైరెక్ట్ ట్యాక్సెస్ ఇన్ టు వన్ tax system gst introduction marked a significant milestone in the history of taxation in india the introduction of this comprehensive system was particularly remarkable in a diverse and federal country like india where multiple tax laws were in consolidated into a single system given the benefits gst promises to deliver primarily through the integration of medium and small uh, industries businesses with their extensive extensive supply chains including e-commerce platforms it is surprising that so many have chosen to remain outside businesses uh, especially in sectors like uh, scrap dealers in steel plastics construction and real estate and some services segments are more prone to voluntary exclusion and exclusion it is also noticeable that many retailers from unorganized sectors as well not showing interest in gst registration there are many advantages than disadvantages by registering voluntarily under gst such as avoiding input tax credit passing input tax credit ease of business including interstate sales better opportunities for avoiding businesses business loans compliance uh, rating maintain uh, maintaining under gst rules helps to attract more customers etc which will be explained by our experts today madam ftcci established in 1917 being an apex chamber of the state is always in the forefront in disseminating the knowledge on gst to our members as well as non members our ex- expert committees on gst and customs chaired by mr ishad now was very actively involved in the evolution of gst 
tax 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 laws federation is always submitting its recommendations on gst as well as direct taxes to the finance ministry and we do submit our pre budget recommendations every year i am pleased to inform that when the head table of ftcci met honorable chief minister shri a revant reddy garu he asked federation to submit its proposals related to gst madam before presenting it to honorable chief minister we would like to present it to you and request to give us time for the same along with your department officials thank you madam for coming to federation and we look forward to work with you closely for the benefit of industry and trades and for the growth of our state of telangana thank you thank you one and all thank you sir i now request the mohammad irshad garu chairman of gst and customs committee to give his introductory remarks chief guest of the program dr k sri devi ji ie president of 50 cci sri suresh singhal ji shri ravi kumar senior vice senior vice president and dignitary is on the dais of the dais good evening to all so gst registration is a gateway to n number of possibilities madam so i would <laughs> so it's not a small gate it's a very big gate one benefit which i can clearly see and which i have seen since last 7 8 years is it will allow the business to grow in a more disciplined manner so prior to gst there were cases where we don't know which invoice was final is it not so for one transaction there were four five invoices and the owner himself used to be confused which invoice is final but in gst at least we know without invoice there cannot be any transaction so that way a business will evolve in a more disciplined way and it will also help in developing a healthy economy and healthy business environment and of course uh, madam uh, directly or indirectly uh, during initial uh, days of gst many uh, tax payers uh, who are into previous regime migrated into gst and i remember those days very clearly taking gst registration was a prestige issue so everyone was asking do you have gst registration or not so voluntarily or otherwise so many people have taken the registration and they have taken the benefit and we have also witnessed a lot of cancellations after that uh, due to various reasons of course but now the most important point is the most important point is having crossed the threshold limit and running the business without registration is a serious offense and if it is not corrected on this on that particular point then as you walk into the future it will multiply the problem and it will multiply the problem at a monumental scale so this is the message that we have to pass on to all our members madam today we have invited the uh, heads of all the associations who will pass on the message and there are also the people who are connected to the small retailers and this is the moot question like as we know last 2 3 days the uh, commercial tax department is uh, doing the survey and one of the outcome of the survey is the discovery of many businesses who have otherwise crossed the threshold limit Uh, yet they are not registered into the gst law so in their own interest the department has taken this initiative 
and this initiative is very important from the uh, uh, point where uh, the, the the unregistered persons are in, informed in advance so that they can avoid all these uh, 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 penalty penalties that are going to come in future and that is not the objective of department where you issue the notices and then you punish them unnecessarily so uh, to avoid this situation these kind of trade awareness programs are being conducted so another thing madam from um, trade perspective also one of the deterrent factors that we are seeing for people uh, to avoid gst registration is a um, lot of uh, uh, tax scrutinies and a lot of issues in handling the tax management uh, from the business perspective so people are a bit scared uh, in getting gst registration because they are scared with the notices with their scared with the amount of compliances that they have to follow they are scared with the amount of the cost that is involved into the uh, management of the gst law so therefore we have been giving numerous representation how to uh, make it easy for the businesses and there is a long way ahead and i was discussing with uh, samyukta madam as well um, before you came madam so she was also suggesting a uh, so few of the points she also told on especially on audit cases where the audit notices were issued the tax payers uh, will not be asked on the points which are already raised into the uh, previous uh, notices so they will be asked they will be questioned they will be asked for giving information only on those points which are um, which are not covered earlier but with the spirit of recent gst council decisions where they have given a relief for 17 18 18 19 19 20 i have requested on the sidelines of this meeting to madam also uh, to go easy at least for first 3 years and maybe we have lot of years ahead where we can discipline the tax payers and also make them more uh, uh, accountable on these aspects that is one and uh, there is a long pending demand in telangana madam uh, at this occasion i also want to request on behalf of the industry that outside telangana many states have almost all states have implemented this where for the goods the registration threshold threshold is 40 lakhs and for services it is 20 lakhs but in telangana this continues to be the 20 lakhs for both the goods and services i acknowledge madam there is there could be a small loss of revenue because uh, um, uh, so, so few tax payers may not come into the tax net but indirectly we believe that it will help the small businesses and it will indirectly help the economy and this has been proven in other states also who have followed the suit so we have given this representation earlier also and in your august presence we are again giving this representation madam maybe you can consider this and with this small note uh, i welcome you madam to the ftcci and we are so pleased to listen uh, to you and thank you so much for giving this opportunity thank you very much uh thank you sir uh, madam just since this is your first visit to our federation we just wanted to show you a small film about ftcci our legacy and our activities it's a one minute thing it's not my first visit to federation okay. i have come as uh, commissioner of municipal administration where we had a very strong role in the talking about the single use plastic Oh. Oh. <laughs> and also on micro plastic, I can see a lot of people. That must be a Tamas program, maybe. <laughs> so I am a veteran for this article. Thank you, <laughs> thank you, ma'am. I got your feedback, but I'm not. It's not the first time. Yeah, yeah. Okay, ma'am. Yeah.
Thank you. I now request Srimati Sumikta Rani, Giant Commissioner, for presentation of technical session. Good afternoon, respected commissioner, Dr. T.K. Srivevi, IAS Madam, President of um, FTCCI, Sri Suresh Kumar Singha, Vice President uh, Sri Ravi Kumar, and uh, Ishad Ahmad, and other dealers who are present here. The main purpose of today's program is to educate more dealers to take registration under GST. CT Department and other Able leadership of our CCT Madam started Street Survey from June 15th. In this survey, we are trying to register more unregistered dealers who are liable to take registration under GST and uh, under PT, even under PTRs. Now, briefly, I will explain who has to take registration and uh, what are our observations. How, uh, what are the necessary documents you require and what are the advantages? Registration is required in the state from which he makes taxable supply. GST is destination based tax. Tax goes to the destination state, but registration in the origin state. Turnover threshold at present in Telangana is 20 lakhs. If you cross 20 lakhs, then you have to take registration. There are some conditions for compulsory registration. There are some people who have to take compulsory registration. There, those are the people who will do interstate supply. Those people have to take compulsory registration. And the casual taxable persons. Persons taxable under the reverse charge basis. Persons making a sale on behalf of someone else whether as an agent or principal. Every e-commerce operator who provides a platform to suppliers to make supply through it. Suppliers who supply goods or services through ECO and uh, the persons who is liable to collect tax at source, TCS detecting uh, persons, these people have to take um, registration and so on. This is a simple chart. On turnover basis, if your uh, threshold is more than 20 lakhs, we have to take a registration. If you are making interstate supply, then you have to take GST registration. If it's a casual taxable person, then he has to take. This uh, registration will be valid for 90 days. 
and uh, agent are similar person who act on behalf of supplier those persons also has to take uh, gst registration those paying tax under reverse charge mechanism those people also has to take non resident taxable person and uh, input tax input service distributor e commerce uh, operator person who supplies uh, via e commerce uh, operator these people have to take a registration so actually we are doing this special uh, uh, registration right street survey our main objective i already told identification of new registration unregistered tax payers who are otherwise liable for gst registration identification of new profession tax payers our observations are like this 23374 tax payers have continuously been under composition scheme for more than 3 years these are our observations in our street survey normally what we will expect if a person is under composition uh, at uh, first year definitely he will increase his turnover and he has to take gst registration in the coming year but unfortunately mm -hmm. continuously these people are under um, composition scheme only and 19277 tax payers have not filed returns right from the date of registration this is very unfortunate this also this is also one of our observation persons who have cancelled their registration earlier are continuously they are doing their business they they cancel their registration but still they are doing then hoteliers and restaurants supplying through swiggy have suddenly cancelled their registration in spite of having offline supply if they are having offline supply then definitely they should have registration but they cancel swiggy accommodation services and lease renters non compliance rate is very high these are the some of our observations these are some of our observations but uh, one thing it's very important now so many digital footprint so many digital tools came information from eva eva bill analytics on the quantum of unregistered persons purchases these informations are available with us if we see this we definitely we can uh, catch hold of that particular person who is doing business uh, without taking registration data from goods transport agencies railways and customs information from it department information from banks digital payment platforms and amounts being credited to personal accounts complaints raised by consumers various government agencies data including that of electricity registration and stamp mining labor department ghms etc all these informations we are gathering and we are collecting definitely if a person is not going to take registration definitely we will the commercial tax department will catch this person before that only it is better please take registrations and uh, please pay the tax uh, genuine tax for uh, taking gst registrations these are the requirements there is no need to tell again these are the simple requirements to just go to you need a valid uh, pan valid bank account ifsc of the say, that uh, particular bank at least one proprietor partner or director or trustee or somebody should have pan an author is a signatory who is an indian resident with the pan and uh, place of business valid email valid indian mobile number prescribed documents whichever are necessary now coming to this special drive for registration actually we started from 15th june uh, at present uh, as per madam's direction we will continue 10 days so please make use of this facility who are unregistered our people anyhow they are visiting and the street survey if you have any doubt if please ask them they are ready to uh, clarify all your doubts uh, please uh, get registered register yourself and the gst and pt also in and uh, our observation we saw that many people are not paying pt at all that has to so convert to normal registration wherever applicable that is from composition to normal uh, gst legitimate in the eyes of bigger companies attract business if you are legitimate definitely you can attract bigger companies that is a good thing for you 
for doing business. Easy access to credit. You'll get a good credit if you are legitimately, if you are uh, registered everything, then automatically you will get a credit, more credit. You will be eligible for government schemes. That is also one advantage which you are having. Pay your legitimate use. That is the thing from our uh, department side and we are uh, asking your question. Thank you. Thank you, madam. I now request office clearance and statement to present a plan to submit the money. Thank you. I now request our chief guest, Dr. T.K. Sridevi Garu, to address the gathering. Friends, thank you once again uh, for uh, organizing this uh, meeting very quick and under very short notice. I appreciate uh, the president as well as uh, the vice president. Uh, yeah the Vice President and uh, Shad for being here and uh, bringing all the trade associations here under one roof. I thank you very much and I appreciate uh, your right earnestness uh, with which you would like to actually support us in this endeavor. So having said that, this is not my first... Uh, uh, <laughs> why, why I'm saying that is uh, when we wanted in municipal administration, we wanted uh, to eradicate single-use plastic. At the time, it was also very important that uh, some of our dealers who deal with manufacture and sale of single-use plastic should not get affected as much. And because of the prescriptions that they were about the microns and other things, we had a meeting here only at the uh, same premises at that point of time. And you all came with a lot of innovative uh, uh, ideas with which we could actually implement a single ban of single-use plastic in most of our uh, smaller towns and city in the whole of the state. In fact, in Swachh Bharat Mission, we also got a lot of awards because of that uh, support we got from all communities. This I'm talking about around five to six years back. And I see the same enthusiasm uh, today when uh, you all have uh, welcomed us from the taxation department. Uh, as uh, was mentioned by Irsha, GST, has been one very phenomenal uh, reform. In fact, uh, uh, Suresh Kumar, Singhal Garu and all have also mentioned about uh, how good uh, this One Nation, One Tax is for the development of the whole country as well as uh, to the state. Uh, with this kind of a thing, we are at a juncture of uh, seven years. Uh, we think that everything is going fine and uh, everything is uh, happening good. But when we look at our uh, developmental goals that the state is looking at, and the kind of revenues we are able to uh, gather through various uh, revenue earning departments, we are falling very, very short of the expectations of the state. Because we want development, we want roads, we want everything to happen good so that Telangana becomes one of the foremost trending states without loans or borrowings. If you borrow, you can even uh, bring heaven here. It's not a problem. But if you borrow, then our children or our grandchildren are also un under the uh, debt uh, uh, repayment. So here we don't want that kind of a situation. We would like to get the legitimate uh, revenues to the state exchequer so that development uh, goals can be met without any hindrance. So that is the reason I am partnering with you uh, for this uh, developmental goal of the state. Are you with me? Yes. If you are with me, I think you should just clap. Thank you very much. I have taken over as Commissioner Commercial Taxes uh, six months back. And uh, we have seen that uh, through continuous persuasion, uh, we could actually earlier uh, the compliance revenue used to be around 68% or so in uh, in the GST regime till six, seven months back. From 68% with our constant monitoring, 
we are not here to penalize anybody but our monitoring has brought uh, compliance from 68% to 82%. So I thank one of all of you here for uh, bringing this kind of an uh, accolade, accolade for our state. Having 82% compliance as on the date of uh, written filing is not a joke because at, at one point of time, the whole state uh, tax uh, machinery is to be engaged in calling the dealers and asking them to pay taxes and file returns. But now is the time where self-commitment uh, uh, from, the, from the businesses community has come to that extent where from 68%, as on the date, they have come to 82%. At the end of the month, we are reaching 90%. And I'm told, never even in VAT or even in uh, general sales tax regime, where people used to be back of your neck, this kind of uh, compliance was seen. So that way I feel GST is really too good, where if you're committed, you can be supported. So this is first thing which came in. Then second thought that came is, when there is so much of uh, compliance coming up, why not it be a rightful declaration of the tax due instead of uh, tying away from that? So when I looked at what are those which are uh, hindering, I came across a lot of uh, uh, cases where uh, they are not filing returns for quite some time. As uh, Samipta has rightly pointed out, there are around uh, uh, non-filers have been around uh, 19,000 or is it 19,000 or so are non-filers. As Irshad mentioned, GST at that time registration was really a, a thing of pride. Maybe they registered and they stopped uh, uh, doing anything or filing returns. So that is where it is so difficult for us to even uh, weed out fake registrations. You know that when somebody is not filing returns, we don't know whether they are doing business or they are just keeping the registrations. But if you look at the ITC fraud that is happening, we have huge ITC fraud. Uh, wherein uh, detections have gone in where uh, this kind of uh, uh, sporadic uh, return filing uh, dealers have actually contributed to the ITC fraud in a way. So there would be a suspicion definitely moving in if there are non-filers at in, in such large numbers uh, continuing even now. So that is where there is a, there is a uh, request for support from the business community from us saying that please help us in this drive and see that there are no non-filers if they are doing business so that when we deal with the fraudulent ITC, we are not putting any genuine uh, businessmen to task or to suspicion. We do not want our uh, development uh, to be sacrificed for want of some suspicion. In fact, we very much believe in a dictum which I keep on telling, it's in Telugu, Andaru Bagundali, Andarlo Manamundali. So it is like everybody prosper and be good, pay taxes, everybody is happy and we are all good. So from that angle, we are not saying that only we should be good, you all suffer. No, this department is only department. Uh, in any, any other welfare department doesn't have this dictum. Here is where they say that please prosper. Please prosper, do well, do enormous business and really become prosperous, but pay your taxes. That's it. So that is where we will bring welfare. So you become a direct contributor for uh, the social welfare schemes. If today Honorable CM is going to talk about uh, uh, right to Bharosa or any other developmental scheme like education that is planning for a model school at the rural areas where children will be able to get uh, a good education irrespective of uh, which uh, background they come from, these things are possible only when you contribute to your mind. While you do your business, you make profit, you also make legitimate uh, declaration of your tax liability and say that is going to contribute to the development of the state. So you are going to be actually strengthening the arms, hands of our, uh, our government as well as the Honorable CM if you are paying your taxes and doing your duty. This is the best win-win situation I can ever think of. So you are doing well and you will also contribute to the state. Having said that, we have found that there are large number of, because Hyderabad being a place where uh, we have uh, convention centers, we have a lot of activities going on, businesses and all. There we see that there is a booming business. Uh, if you go as a shopper on any of these uh, weekends, you will see the beautiful designer wear, everything coming in and uh, it, is, it is really a pleasure to go shopping. But when you look at the commodity analysis, I see that uh, 
ready-made garments are showing a minus growth. How, to, how can that happen? So there has to be, we always say when a food is cooked, you look at a grain and you know it is cooked. Here it is, I see a sample and they are so very, doing so very good in business in garments especially. And when I look at the, my commodity analysis, they are minus. This is very, very disturbing. Second thing is when we do a commodity analysis of iron and steel, I feel that they are, they are just pulling the growth down. But when you look at how much is the transportation that is happening, I see that the reverse is true. So when I when we have a, a wavel system, we get the data, everything on our uh, dashboard. So we see everything that is happening. So when we are declaring, uh, why not declare it correctly so that uh, you'll be able to make good and make a legitimate uh, growth rather than uh, dealing with uh, clandestine business. So when we do this commodity analysis, so many things come to our uh, notice, which I thought I should bring it to uh, all of you here, that these are the things which, which need to be a little more, uh, you know, commitment and uh, willing to do a fair business has to come in for certain commodities where we are uh, looking at a lot of difficulty in arresting uh, the kind of evasion that is happening. So I would like all of you to support us in this endeavor. First thing is voluntary declaration is very important. So we are looking at uh, tax compliance to go higher. We are also looking at uh, enrolling uh, so that uh, the uh, threshold that is fixed beyond that are definitely getting into the tax, tax net. And then uh, there are also under declarations that are coming in which need to be really fathomed. And we do not want, any one of us do not want uh, uh, ITC fraud happening. Uh, rampant. So that is where I would uh, solicit your uh, uh, cooperation. And then when we are talking about this casual uh, taxpayers, it's always better that they know how much business they are doing because that also going to help. Most of these are uh, small businesses. I've seen, I've been to HICC on day one of our uh, drive, registration drive. I've seen uh, very young entrepreneurs and they are doing amazing business in garments and designer ways but they do not know really that this is going to help them in getting access to credit and doing business at a larger scale. So these are certain things which when uh, uh, the benefits of uh, GST are told, the credit worthiness is another big thing and access to credit is a big thing where businesses can grow and government also can actually support through its banks and various schemes that are there. So these are all uh, having a lot of implications, but the starting point is registration. So this is one 10 days drive that we have brought in and it has given tremendous uh, results because we are seeing that uh, even in uh, 1 in 10 that we have verified are eligible for uh, registration. So 10% is a big number. So unless we, that is when we thought we will meet up, reach out to you to spread this message of voluntarily enrolling themselves so that it also saves a lot of time for us in, in uh, you know, uh, in a, like a uh, mouse race or something that going behind, behind people to ask them to register. So I'm giving a call that all of you please mention it to your uh, respective clientele and your members that they should uh, register into uh, GST if they are crossing the threshold so that it makes the business fair for both sides. Having said that, I also feel that uh, this uh, during this registration, one important thing that you should understand is the professional tax. Professional tax is a, a revenue for the local bodies. Whenever we talk about if they, Hyderabad is having floods, all of us blame that the roads are not good or uh, the drainages are not so good, sewerage system is bad. How do you think the local bodies are going to make this? One of the major source of uh, uh, revenue for them is uh, professional taxes. And everybody who is a graduate more or less qualifies to be a uh, subscriber to the professional tax. But we are seeing that with so much of a business base that we have, we are not having the same kind of a commitment for professional tax. In fact, a long time ago, they thought that if local bodies are collecting this professional tax by themselves, uh, there is a likelihood that familiarity breeds contempt, like uh, or uh, familiarity is going to get into uh, favor, they wanted this to be brought to the commercial taxes department so that the collections are much more objective and fair. 
same is the thing of gst also so when we when it was brought here unfortunately it, it lost its purpose and we are collecting very little uh, professional tax which otherwise this uh, department by themselves would have done having worked in municipal administration i know how much it is important to get even that uh, small money that uh, comes under the professional taxes because this is irrespective of the registrations of the land values just by having a human resource who are graduates and above they are doing some professional job they have to subscribe 150 rupees only or uh, i think is the uh, tax that has to be levied but with the population the money that is coming into the municipalities is enormous you can get your uh, immediate redress or grievance redress with the small money that is coming in but now we are collecting on a year something like 900 which is 900 crores which is very small i think that professional taxes with the kind of a uh, drive that we are giving it can go three fourths this is getting proven so whatever was 900 can actually go to 3000 crores if we, if we get everybody in the net but we are also targeting as maybe with the kind of a commitment coming from your organization we should also get at least to double the, from what it is having said this this is one major uh, uh, area where with little effort and no burden 150 rupees or so is not a big money for us uh, to be Uh, parting with uh, on a monthly basis so that is where you need to really look at how can we actually contribute to the growth that is one important thing which is coming uh, along alongside uh, our gst registration we have also taken up profession tax uh, registrations also and uh, if you look at the comparative figures between karnataka or maharashtra telangana uh, tamil nadu or kerala we are saying that uh, the number of tax payers that are there with us are very very small when compared to our neighboring states population is not that great we have city we have hyderabad and we have uh, peri urban uh, areas in within hyderabad and around in hmd area where there is huge business that has come in but if you look at the revenue base we have not reached uh, that great uh, levels that our uh, neighboring states have so this is where uh, i would request actually this voluntarily if you are able to register legitimate uh, tax that we have to get we will get so we don't have to chase and then uh, is it needn't be a lot of notices because when you said that there are so many notices why do you think those notices are coming because that is all uh creeping for uh, getting the revenues out so each time an an item or a ineligible item is seen on your return are in your uh, uh, forms that you fill up you we come up with okay this is again coming up so you give a notice when an audit is done a comprehensive notice is given when a vtc is done for that part a notice is given so these are multiple uh, levels of scrutiny that is happening because of which you get multiple notices it's a pain but if there are large number of notices it means that our commitment or voluntary declaration is not all right if somebody is saying too many notices please at the back of the mind please think that somewhere our our uh, declarations are not that very right otherwise there won't be so many notices coming in if there is a clear cut uh, declaration of your turnover as well as your tax that you are paying through your monthly return if there is a congruence between those then this uh, kind of uh, Uh, on a spot uh, not uh, uh, notices would not be issued because we are also not looking at how much is the transaction cost for each taxpayer that is not we would be liking isn't it so is the case for even the taxpayer to hire somebody to keep on giving replies to these notices so instead of this kind of a tutu mai mai kind of a situation why not why not come up with a voluntary declaration a little more fair let us work together for the developmental goals of the state and let us also see that wherever as per the act it is a very simple act there is no complication at all but the way it is being administered and the way it is being taken in is where there is a matter of concern so that's why when uh, uh, the short and sweet presentation that uh, samyukta did he mentioned all aspects like how easy it is to register and uh, what are the provisions that are there if if somebody defaults so these are certain things which we need to take it uh, 
into our uh, uh, understanding and see that all of us are working for the development of the state develop for development of businesses we are not here to thwart your uh, uh, neck we as i told you we all want you to prosper this is the only department which prays for your growth and development so take that as a positive thing and uh, see that uh, this registration drive is taken with uh, full full uh, flair with which it is moving we do not want uh, long times to be done because we are this is an experimental basis where we have taken 10 days and we are going to cover strategic areas where uh, which are heavily evasion prone so if there is anything else uh, coming up to our notice later time then it would only bring the uh, provisions of the law which also includes uh, penal provisions so you don't want to get into that not another round of paperwork so let us all work together and please address your associations and your members to see that uh, they register and then uh, they do a fair business and uh, from that uh, standpoint again i thank uh, the organizers for giving me this time to talk to you all about uh, our developmental goals and the vision of this government and how you can contribute in the growth and development of this uh, uh, government i'm i'm open to any suggestions that are coming in from this organization with regard to simplifying gst no issue at all we will definitely make uh, every effort to see that uh, this is uh, streamlined and the tax payer services are also taken uh, into consideration your time and effort also are taken into consideration in getting our revenues so from uh, with this uh, thank you very much for giving me this time and uh, hope that uh, together we will work if you agree with me only you should clap Uh, thank you, Madam, for uh, coming to Thunder. Uh, we all appreciate uh, the government work, and we know that unless until we join hands together, things will not move forward. The same spirit. Uh, please don't take my work as very seriously, but definitely look into the subject. It is more important. Like. In industry and trade, maybe out of hundred, one or two black sheep will be there. And the same way in the department, also in the same way. So as you are trying to move around with the city to catch hold of the people and uh, bringing them into the net, that is a good. That everybody should be into the net of the taxes. Simultaneously, I request you to also look into your site. There are something happening. So please take care of that also, so that other. real uh, business people should not get affected that is more important for my and uh, in the gst vision a lot of new changes are coming day by day there are small uh, mistakes which is happening because in small scale sector most of the people doesn't know how to move forward because we have to depend uh, on the uh, consultants whatever we communicate to them they will do doing sometimes we do some mistakes by communicating There's no doubt. It's not that the consultants are doing wrong thing, but it's only the uh, what you call the subject knowledge will not be there for the small scale sector. So some mistakes are happening in the while filing or maybe headings or somewhere. So these sort of things, I think we need to whenever the notices are issued uh, at that time before issuing the notices, I feel that they should be one to one uh, with the senior officer so that the statement is sorted out. Is my personal view. Thank you, uh, Mr. Anil is uh, office bearer of Telangana Practice uh, Plastic Manufacturers Association. Respected Madam, I am Sunil Sara, President of TISMA, that is Telangana Iron and Steel Manufacturers Association. I highly appreciate, Madam, that we have to form an alliance for the development of the state. Wonderful thought. Running a steel industry is not an easy task. Absolutely. Not at all easy. They were around 150 units in Hyderabad 10 to 12 years back. Today, I believe there are only around 30. It is a high turnover, but we have thin margin. The problem with our Telangana state is it's landlocked. We can't import. We do not have any mines. 
we have to get our sponge and everything from other state so having all this but we are still running we are surviving minimizing our cost of production to the best effective way also said that after saying this we have to also compete with the public sector undertakings and everything we do not have any higher capacity or anything the basic issue is it should be smooth sailing for us also and for you all also the basic issue you also know about this scrap purchases and everything so what is happening we generally concentrate on running the industry managing selling finances bank issues and all we legitimately purchase this scrap have all the evidences and everything you all give them the registration we regularly file our returns and everything so but when the department comes they say that you have to see from where they have purchased what they have done and everything madam we cannot go in depth either we do our business or go and sit in their office and see what they are doing but we are maintaining to the best of our ability all the records all the evidences this is all so kind of look into this into this also it will also give us a stress free management and the suggestions what i suggest is we have been telling even the finance ministry even in the delhi so many ministers we have represented that why do not we make it this scrap purchase on a rpm method or reduce the duty to 5% we have given so many representations but ultimately what happens we are a bigger fish we have maintain turnover we are available so every time we live under stress doing such a big business paying so many taxes power bills and everything giving so much of employment but we feel what the but we really are under stress and everything always 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 so this is my suggestion and we also like to have a personal audience madam we seven or eight can come our members we can have a dialogue we can have a discussion open discussion and i promise you if you do this rcm and 5% or or oblique five percent the revenue what you what you are going to get it is going to be tremendous as a partner for the development of the state we can do wonders i promise thank you thank you given a very straight thing i want to also respond though i did not respond to your previous uh, speaker uh, the thing is uh, i totally agree i totally agree how difficult it is and what kind of a risk that is involved but you also look from the tax administration point of view i have analyzed in the last few months the e bill data that has come for iron and steel and if you look at the turnovers we have got anywhere around 900 crores per month but you know what we are getting is only 250 crores less than that sometimes and last quarter it has been minus so if it is legitimately so much is coming through invoicing that is very payable somewhere it is getting dissipated so i'm not talking about a uh, 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 committed or a uh, taxpayer who is uh, being fair and who is being rightful business but because of this kind of a uh, uh, sensitivity in that commodity there is likelihood of some kind of a trade war the tax is getting dissipated so you need to definitely cooperate with us so that both of us together are going to bring out arguments in one or two black sheep yeah we need to handle them with much more stern uh, hand so that we will bring a right business and it is such a required thing when we are talking about uh, hyderabad the one thing that comes to everybody's mind is real estate and uh, the kind of construction activity that is going on definitely iron and steel is going to be one major commodity So we cannot say that we we are not here to say that oh, we are going to cut it off. You you should not be there. We want you to be there. The state wants you to be there. But we also should be aware that uh, the legitimate uh, variable data is showing around 990 crores that could have been uh, the tax liability that coming into the state where taxes should come. We are not even getting 200. 200 is like what one one fifth of the. total that should have come and if you think about anything else like rerolling or anything material not coming through through uh, transfer that is registered just imagine the scope so that is where we want you to collaborate with us 
to see that there is uh, wherever there is good business happening let it happen and let the taxes come in wherever there are issues we should handle but just because there are so many difficulties you can't let go free rise or slip away which are actually uh, like a termite they are eating up the state revenue so i would like uh, your solicitude or cooperation for that your uh, um, recommendation that are there definitely we will take it up in the next gst council it has been going on i know i have attended the in this last six months two gst council meetings but decision is not forthcoming i am not uh, nirmala sitaraman to take a decision <laughs> So I know my role. I will definitely take your uh, uh, concern next uh, onto the table. Let us see how it happens. But I I would uh, solicit a complete uh, cooperation from your sector because that is one sector which which is uh, do, uh, which is doing good business, and you should be doing it. I'm not asking you that uh, your growth should uh, stagnate. I want you all to grow by leaps and bounds. But this is uh, this hard data that I'm quoting. is very powerful so please uh, please uh, cooperate with us yeah i'm gautam jain from telangana oil industries and product distribution and also research related before telangana jewelers and on the basis of this so please i promise me uh, i'm happy to come by i and my fellow to our kids in which uh, I think first we see after a long time are on GFT. But we, we all traders are very much cooperating with government, and we want that government revenue to go up. But otherwise, secondly, we are those person who is doing business. We are free. We are working for government because of salaries, because we invest, we do business, we pay the rent. We collect the uh, taxes and remit to you. So that could be in your mind also that we are doing so much work for the government. But there are few things what I have seen because the first meeting what we had in Rajdhani Hotel, some of our oil trade industry side at that time, Mr. Sumit Kumar was uh, in that uh, council of GSA. Please come to the question. Yeah, yeah, I am coming to that only, madam. I am coming to that only. Now three things are there. First thing, new registration. Definitely yes. Small traders, we will also push all our uh, co uh, association members. And 99, I will say 100 percent of our members are already registered. But if still somebody is left out, we will definitely help government to make them also members. Secondly, now the small traders. What happens is now I am surprised because I have disappointed this mind many times, in, even on online to the government also. GSTR one never asked for zero percent because there are three things: zero percent, nil, and exempted. Three things are there, but you never GSTR one never asked for zero percent. Whereas GSTR three automatically takes that. Now when B two B and B two C is given. But it is not calculating and doing that updating that one. And when filing your year new return, your officer do notices on that zero percent tax rate. Where is that? So that greatest problem is that. Secondly, all trainers I have been to the city office many times. Seventeen, eighteen notices you are issuing now. How many of you can give that answer? Even government officials don't know at that time what was the problems, and you, you yourself also is aware that there were so many changes in the software. Continuously, GST software was updated, and the figures were changing automatically. Then how can we call for the things? And small trader, so for example, with one percent, two percent proprietor, how can he run every day for government officers? For these things, so you, that's uh, even we have written to central government where they said uh, up to some percentage will not issue any notice, but still those notices are coming. So that you have to look into. Thirdly, you said about professional tax. We are fighting for long time, whether we are businessmen or professional. There is tax against businessmen who different than professional. So why do you tax collect uh, tax from businessmen as a professional? 
if you are collecting that if you have a certificate that you are professional sir i am i am telling you you all are professionals only you no. business to earn your life yes. you are no. professional Yes, take it as professionals or did I take you only as business now? But then, which one is government form? Any form is okay. Which one is professional slash professional? It is not uh, you are both. It can be either businessman or professional. It cannot be businessman and professional. Yes, yeah, please do take of that. And thirdly, what I request you continuously, it is when it has become online, everything. Then what is display? I will tell you that our own traders who have complained me, they have given on notice. They have replied in the online. Officers not checking online answer. They are issuing again second notice. When they are asking, then we have already replied online. They have to check and verify the mistake what is there. When every detail is given, then they are showing that there is a the details are not there. I think please, everyone, be short. We have. No, yes. I am closing my point. Uh, Take so much. No, no, no. I am closing my point. Next time you explain your problem. What I am saying. Yes, there is one problem. I have told you zero percent. It is not updating in GS3. You check your with your software. If you want, I can show you a professional. Secondly, the first whatever reply notice reply is given online. Let them check that. Okay, thank you, madam. This notice is part. I just want to articulate yeah. on behalf of the industry. See what is happening. I'll tell you. Uh, GST or nine, as we know, the the format itself is not perfect as of today, and even within the format, uh, so many tables are optional. Uh, the government itself has given the relief. Uh, whether you want to fill it, fill it. I don't want to fill it. It's all right. So now, what this software does? This software analyzes GSTR one, three B, and GSTR nine, and based on the analysis, it issues the uh, notices automatically. And wherever it, it finds the conflicts, it issues the notices. Now, the problem with these um, findings in the notices is, madam, they are all vague. In most of the cases, they are not correct. Now, if you, I would, I would invite your attention to this fact, madam. Now, what happens? The imagine from taxpayer perspective. So, taxpayer is given a notice, and in the notice, the most of the findings are may be correct, may not be correct. First thing is the stock. So, the the numbers itself, the finding out numbers from where these numbers are coming, how these numbers are coming, how to crack those numbers and find out whether that is correct or not. One exercise, madam. Second exercise, if you attend before the officer, the taxpayer has to prove. that these numbers are incorrect third thing is then he has to give the correct numbers so the effort is multiplied and the most of the taxpayers or the accountants uh, who with the taxpayers they are all not competent and another most important issue is madam these notices are directly sent to taxpayers and they have to run behind the offices many times to explain to the tax officer so uh, in a way this software has um, uh, of course it is it is gathering revenue there is absolutely no doubt about it but again at what cost that is the issue yes. so i think that is the yeah. the question about multiple uh, notices is the second thing that is examined i do not bring that again because anyway i have noted down about that this has been discussed even with this the council meetings about the number of notices If it is a valid uh, thing, then we will definitely look at. But uh, about that, maybe uh, listen, uh, we need to really examine it further. Ah, uh, then I'm uh, Rudi. I'm the member of the uh, management committee and also a part of the management of the profession. If the topic is on the discussion, I'll come back to the discussion and stick to it. But uh, all I want to acknowledge your message which has been given. So you appreciate to talk about partnership. You talked about progress on either side. I think we all have to work towards it. There is no doubt about it. Uh, in this context, I have two points which uh, is actually a cause of concern for the industry. One is that we are looking at this sort of a registration drive. We are getting a lot of people every time when we tell our clients, and the clients also tell to their members saying that, "Boss, you are already crossing 20 lakhs. Take the registration. Then only you deal with me." So this sort of a um, conditions have been there. When the onboarding uh, conditions are there. So a lot of effort has been taken for them to make a registration mandatory because they are required to. 
But for some reason, this person has been registered and he is non-compliant, not filing returns or something. The department is too much of cancelling it from the date of the original registration. And that is again misfiring me because a notice is coming to me saying that you have procured the goods from a, from a uh, non-registered, non-existent uh, person and you pay back the ITC. So, is it my cost or for reward for me to get somebody in compliance as a CPL? So, this is a very big cause of concern for the industry where we want to partner and we want to get the revenue, but it could not backfire me. So, this is one request for one point which needs uh, in your attention. The second is uh, while we are taking the registration, I have two major challenges, especially in Telangana, uh, is that uh, there are a lot of offices which may work on a trade basis. That is your interest or what on ice code and all those things. Because the resource number is same, there is always a rejection which comes saying that for same to myself, I cannot, uh, some people I just cannot you know, do a registration. The nature of business may be so that we may not take a big office. The nature of business requires only one person to operate from India to do a supervision of some installation activity which is happening or things like that. So this also may have to be considered. And uh, another uh, thing is that. Uh, if the owner is not in India, that's why not in Telangana, that is why Karnataka person is there, he is coming with opening a new store here, where he is, so he wants to sell, no resident in Telangana, and he has also been addicted. So these are the things which are... Yeah, I will just take a witty uh, uh, thing on you. When we did uh, one uh, fraudulent case, we came across uh, uh, fake registrations. You know what? Some kind of ingenuity for the genuine problem that you mentioned about same address without uh, having more than one. This uh, person who advised has uh, uh, taken the system to such a foolery that he put a uh, tissue papers and uh, and loaded it for a leased document, and the system still accepted and gave registration. That registration cost forty crore loss to the state where uh, the e-bikes uh, scandal that we have uh, brought out in uh, in January, if you see that the mode is operating, these taxpayers who got registered were only registering at some point they wanted to take the ITC and then disappear. So in that situation, they, they had uh, misuse or uh, what I can say violated the system to a certain extent that they put in a CQ paper against the lease uh, document. I'm giving you ideas. I, I but let mind. me tell you, I'm also going to track this kind of a mistake. What I mean to say is, it has to be both ways. There has to be a genuineness. If there is a genuine issue coming in, there are ways of handling it. System is not going to. System, as you said, it's, it's based on an algorithm, which will keep on bringing uh, deviations or if it is the same address, how do you know that that existed? In fact, in this case that I'm mentioning, the addresses were not found at all. And these dealers who were addressed, who had uh, registered in Madhapur, were not having given a jhopra anywhere. When we went to the address that was shown as the manufacturing unit, it was uh, just a, a sack, not even a hut. Can you imagine this kind of a violation of the law? I'm using very strong words, they violated the system. So how do we check that when we when we don't want such situations to come, the uh, the system or the software becomes much more stricter. In that instance, what you're talking about is the only proviso to, this is not a rule, where one table can be enough for a registration. Definitely, maybe when they are giving the right uh, assistant code, then we can also provide for that. Let us look for a solution. Yes, but this is right. not a major kind of thing. I am talking about, yeah. these are uh, so rampant that in that uh, particular case, uh, it was mind-boggling because after I joined as a commissioner, that was my first case where we quoted arrest. Because it was like uh, uh, a dealer was just multiplying registrations just to take advantage of the refund provisions in uh, GST and uh, mushroom in uh, registrations. And in that case, unfortunately, one chartered accountant also was uh, a mastermind uh, from Delhi doing this uh, with an uh, NRI who got caught in this net. Unfortunate for the NRI because uh, he, he thought this is a fair business, but we had to arrest almost like eight people in that case. So for, uh, from our office, uh, from our uh, department and the 
remaining the counterparts from the taxpayer side. So, I mean, we are never uh, one sided. No, I, I appreciate, madam. I appreciate uh, that this should not happen. At the same time, there could be vigilant business people. I was telling it has also the same thing. Multiple uh, notices, issues that are there, we will take it and we will definitely thresh it out. But I want definitely a support and collaboration from the business and trade. One one hand and then we will leave because it's getting a little late. Uh, I'm sorry. On, on this, sir, I just want to two points which I want to take. Because if you see the 17, 18, 18, 19, 19, 20, we had a software developed by Kuchini Software. Particularly, they have developed software. And one of my clients, I'm just telling you the actual case. But actually, uh, saying triple IT, triple IT is not in the scene. Oh, I will inform the Kuchini software was developed. IIT Hyderabad. I am going through forensic audit for your information. Okay, ma'am. Sorry. Uh, what has happened is in 1789 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, because the software, what happens is immutable ITC. What it picks up is first two digits of SCC code, double nine. Because if you see, immutable property single word, 9954 is the SCC code. Same thing. And public ID is 9988. This creating a big problem for us to explain that this is not a civil work, this is a mechanical work fabrication. So, a lot of bodies are coming in this time. So, my question is where the software takes a four digit SCC code. So the correct uh, immutable IDC correct knowledge can come. Thank you. Uh, thank you, madam. I now request office bearers and chair to present Cheryl Payne to our chief guest, Dr. T.K. Sri Devi Garu. I now request Senior Vice President Nankumar Garu to propose vote of thanks. At the outset, the summaries, Madam, is very clear. After this government has come in, in six months from 68%, we went to 82%. So she says, let's join hands and reach 100%. And they're already at 90 that's what Madam was saying. And uh, she said in Telugu, Andaru Bhavundal, Andaru Bhavundal, so Manamundal. So it's like, if I have ISO in my house, and ISO outside is not there, then I'm not part of the society. So she says, see that ISO standard is there, an entire Telangana to begin with, then the nation. So we all accept that, madam, and uh, let's all join hands, as she was requesting, madam was requesting, join hands in ensuring that all the fellow uh, businessmen and traders do take their GST registration and ensure that the Telangana grows. And uh, thank you, Madam, once again. It was such a wonderful uh, meeting and it's an eye opener. And I assure you, on behalf of FTCCI and all the associations who have come, we'll pass this message. In the same tenure uh, toner as you have shared with us, we'll tell them. In a friendly way, but we tell them that this is something serious. Let's accept it. Sir, thank you, man. Thank you. Thank you all. Uh, I think the time is running out. Eight minutes. Eight minutes. Yeah. 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 Eight minutes. Y
भाई सुनो भाई प्लीज प्लीज जाओ थोड़ा थोड़ा पहले आइए आप अनिल जी आइए सुनो जी प्लीज प्लीज प्रकाश जी आइए अरे आओ भाई आ जाओ अच्छा से ले ले भैया